Praise God, everybody, and Amen. welcome back to another time of study where we study the Word of God and, and, and see how the Word of God amen, directs our life and how it increases our life in which we apply to our lives and help us to grow and to be more equipped and against the wells of the devil. We thank you, each and every one, especially our Facebook friends, for continuing to join in with us as we continue to lift up our sick and shut in in our prayers. Also, we want you to lift up the Smith family if they are going to criminalize one of their loved ones to come and serve. Amen. Amen. We do that every, every heart that are ahead of our and bereaved. We want to lift them up as well. Yes. I want to pray for the victims that have been victimized by the useless and senseless uh, brutality that's yes. going on. Yes. And also the senseless killing that's yes. going on yes. around the world. Yes. And so we we pray that God will continue to intervene and to comfort those families who's been victimized by the senseless killing. Amen. Father, we come tonight again in the mighty name of Jesus. We're so grateful, Master, that you allowed us to step foot in your house just one more time. Amen. Not only to step foot, Lord God, but it is a, it is we are we are grateful, Master, that during the course of the day nor hurt, harm, or danger came to us that we was able to perform the task that was before us today. As we lift up the Smith family and others whose heads are bowed in bereavement, we pray that they'll comfort the family's heart. Lord, well, not only the Smith family, but others and those who's been victimized, who's a part of the senseless killing yeah. and brutality from the forces that are supposed to be protecting us. And Lord God, we give you glory again tonight as you continue to protect the church and cover us with your divine protection as we continue to worship personally in person right here in Washington <coughs> Baptist Church. We pray for every member. We pray, oh God, that all is well with them. The ones we have seen, we pray, Lord God, that they will come and, and be with us and worship with us very soon. Again, Master, we ask that your anointing will fall fresh on all of us, open ears and hearts to receive your word tonight. Lord God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in our sight. Yes. Lord, you are our King. You are our Redeemer. Yes. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 Our lesson tonight is going to be coming out of the 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 through 4. 1 through 4. Uh, tonight. And tonight, our lesson, we're just going to just briefly touch on uh, the the trying of our faithfulness right. because we, we talked about the purpose of being tried last week and it's counted all joy out of the book of James and I think that's going to be a part of our Sunday school lesson come Sunday Amen. and we want to stay with that theme uh, just a little bit longer because I think this particular lesson that might touch us on the area of our faith that is not only to God, but also to your local church. Yes. And so, so we're going to touch on that. <laughs> amen, amen. Let's put that on south right there. <laughs> I have some things I want to look up. But anyhow, anywho, notice what it says. It says, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and steward of the mysteries of God. Yeah. Moreover, it is required in steward that a man be found faithful. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judge of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by, by myself, yet I am not hereby justified. Mm -hmm. But he that judges me is the Lord. Amen. 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 Lord. Again, the lesson tonight is the trying of our faithfulness. The trying of our faithfulness. Amen. And the truth be told, every one of us will experience, amen, some type of trial. Amen. amen. Especially in the in the faithfulness department to see how faithful you are 
to the assignments that have been given to you, how faithful you are to your local ministry, how faithful you are to the calling of the ministry that God has called you to. How faithful are you to your family members? How faithful are you to friends who rely or trust in you to accomplish things or do for them what they cannot do for themselves? Amen. Amen. So we all would experience some type of trial. And tonight we're going to talk about being tried in our faithfulness. Yeah. Amen. Amen. During Paul's time, amen, and certainly true in our time, there are an enemy of the cross. The enemy of the cross always come and try to be objectively against what we do for the Lord. They talk about what we do for the Lord. They, they can't see the reasoning behind what we do for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Especially when we give our time, our resources to the local church. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they, don't see, they, don't, they don't see the sense of all of that. When you can take the time, your resources, and the things that you do for, for the church, you can do those things for yourself. All right. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Also, the, 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 you're going to be tried by false teaching. How, how well you know the gospel. How well you know scripture. And they will debate with you concerning scripture to see whether or not you are fine-tuned or fine-versed in scripture. And they, will, they will challenge you in areas where you, where you should be standing on the word of God. They, they, tr they try you about what is true, amen, according to the word of God. And so by us studying God's word or reading God's word, amen, we equip ourselves for those challenges that we face from the enemy, amen? Amen. 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 And, 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 and they challenge us even when we are carrying the good news to non-believers. And that's one of the things, the areas where the enemy don't want us to go. The enemy don't want us to go and carry the good news to non-believers. Amen. And Satan wants non-believers, those who don't believe, amen, to stay in their groups. Mm -hmm. They don't want them to, they don't want the light to be shining in their hearts where they come aware of their of their sin natures so and they give their, their lives and their sins over to the Lord. They don't want them to be a part of the, of, of the believers of the kingdom of God. They want them to stay a part of the kingdom of darkness. You see, there were, there were certain members of the Gnostic faith or the Gnostic religion who were set out to destroy the fundamental, the fundamental teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They claimed that the Son of God did not come in the flesh. And their whole argument was, if he was the son of God, then how could he be from heaven or being of, the, of, the, of, of heaven from God die on the cross? How could he allow himself to be captured, beat all night long, and still hang on the cross and die? If he was from, if he had, a, if his destiny was from heaven. If he was the son of God, why would he allow himself to be captured or to die? The cruel death of the cross. You see, and that's what their argument was. And, and John defended that argument over in 1 John verses 1 and 2. He defended that argument. He said, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes. He, was a, he had an eyewitness account of Jesus Christ. He said, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled. Notice what he said. How did he describe Jesus? The word of life. Amen. The word of life. Because in St. John, he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Yeah. That word 
the, the, the word there means Lugos. It is the, the word of God, the Lugos of God. Amen. His, his word. So, so the word of God put on flesh and walked among us and came down. Amen. And was allowed and, and gave his life so that you and I may have a right to the tree of life. Amen. Amen. Paul also insisted that Jesus was fully human and fully God. Over in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Notice what it says. For it pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. So, so they cut across the argument that the Gnostics was, was trying to pull away, pull away from the believers or try to turn the believers away from following Christ. Paul and John come straight at him. And John says, we handled him. We saw him. We, we was there when he hung on the cross. We was there when behind closed doors when he walked through the doors. And we put our hands, we put on our hands in the nail prints. We saw him. We, we was there when he died. And when they wasn't there on the scene when he died. He, but they, they saw him being captured. And so Paul writes to the Col Colossian church who was also being persuaded by the Judaizers and also the Gnostics religion, amen, that they have to have do something else in order to receive salvation. The Gnostics were trying to tell them because they was an intelligent group and their intelligence, their intelligence could not accept the Son of God, Jesus as being the Son of God. They could not accept the, the, the death on the cross as being the, as being the way to the kingdom of God to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so they tried the faithfulness of believers to, to, stand, to be steadfast in the following of Jesus Christ. And what they do today, they got so many today to try to get us to turn away from the following of the gospel to accept some type of new way uh, gospel or new way ministry rather than to follow the book of the Bible or the gospel of the Bible that we know that there's no error in it. So your faith will be your, your faithfulness will be tried. Your faithfulness will be tried whether or not you're going to be loyal to your local church. And I think this is what happened in, in what we're seeing now. Those who say they were faithful to their local church no longer faithful to their local church. They don't, they don't have any excuse now not to worship person, in person on Sunday. And even if they're not worshiping in person with their local church, or they give it. So, so Satan had a way, had a way to cut across and cut across and move away, move them away from those who was fellowshipping, those who was worshiping. We see many are not worshiping today. Amen? Amen. Amen. You still with me? Amen. Paul discovered that the knowledge of God word can bring eye open and understanding. So this is how Paul combated against the Gnostics and the Judaism that was uh, that was the opponent against the gospel of Jesus Christ. He believed knowledge, more knowledge of, of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ made you firm, steady in the walk with Jesus Christ. The more knowledge you have, the more you was able to combat against the false teaching or the nonsense that is out there in the world. And he believed that. This is what he says. Look at what he writes over in Colossians chapter 1 again, verses 9 and 10. He said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And then his, his prayer specifically. He prayed a specific prayer. To, he says that to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Not, not any kind of knowledge now. Grab hold to what it said. Not any knowledge. He said the knowledge of 
His will. Amen. <clears throat> what is the will of God? <clears throat> what is the will of God? That no man should perish. That none should perish. But all should come unto repentance. That none should perish. But to come unto repentance. Right? To turn away. Right? You, you, have, you, have to, you have to repent. You have to turn. Right? Turn from where you currently at. Turn from yeah, turn your simple ways, right? Turn from being an unbeliever to a believer. Right? That's his that's his will for humanity. The question is, do we believe we, we know that all won't be saved? Right? Even though he made it, he made it as easy as it can be for humanity or mankind to accept Jesus as their Savior. Mankind still will not accept Jesus as their Savior. This is what the Gnostics were doing. The Gnostics could not accept Jesus as the Son of God. And, and there's, there's many Gnostics today. We classify some as atheists, you see, today. But Gnostics today, they're an intelligent group. They're very, and they pride themselves on the knowledge and their intelligence. Rather than they pride themselves on the knowledge and the word of God. But uh, because what, what Bible do they use? Do they use the, the King James Bible? They got something different. They, they don't. They don't. They don't use the. They don't compare to the Bible at <coughs> all <coughs> as their source of knowledge. If they did, they probably believe that Jesus did. Wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. well, so, so what? Well, well, there are, there are some. Well, you have the Jehovah Witness. Who have their own they own they have their own doctrine, their own yeah. Bible that they follow. I just told you that way. Yeah. That they follow themselves. You have the Mormons, they also have their own writing. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't both of them, uh, Jehovah and uh, the Bible, ain't their Bible similar to the King James Version? No, it isn't. There's some different stuff in there, but yeah. stuff in there read the same. Some read yeah. the same. But the conclusion of it is this. That, that Jesus, Jesus Christ, they don't believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mormons believe that all of us are gods. They, there's a passage in Scripture where Jesus does say we're gods. And he's talking about being authority over the demonic spirits in reference to that. But he says we all are gods and we all capable of saving ourselves. But we're not capable of saving ourselves. That's why he said Jesus, right? Yeah. The perfect Lamb of God to be the to be the propitiation for our sins, because if we were all capable of saving ourselves, He would have no need to send Jesus. Amen. Well, nobody made a grave either. Right? We wouldn't have, wouldn't it? right? Because we we just save ourselves. So they have different doctrines, right, and, and, and different beliefs, and they doctrinate those who come and be a part of their. Their religion, they, they doctrinate them into the religion. And they pour into them to where they don't see they don't see nothing else and their main focus is what the what they have been taught from their from their writings. And so what Paul Paul here is saying, Paul here is saying that the knowledge of his will, that he this is his prayer to, for the Colossus Church, that they are be more more attuned to understanding and reading and having gained knowledge of God's will rather than trying to verse themselves with the Gnostic religion. You see, it, it's hard for any, any of us who are faithful to God and you are not acknowledging the word of God to debate with somebody who, who's been indoctrinated into a different different religion. And you're not, you, you're not capable to to, to, to go hand in hand, you know, tack for tack, if you're not well versed in your scripture. You follow what I'm saying? If you're not well versed in your scripture, they can tell you anything. They can tell you a whole lot of stuff that you think is true, but it's not true. That's why it's so important for Bible study and Sunday school. And, and on your personal time, reading your Bible on your personal time. It is so important because the Satan is Satan is going to and forth seeing who he may be able to destroy. 
And he's and he's gaining a lot of foothold on on on, on so-called believers who say they are believers and Christians but don't know the truth. And so the, he, he's able to shape, he's able to shape the, the foundation, not the foundation, he's able to shape the church up because you don't have you don't have those who claim to be faithful to remain faithful. We, this is what the Bible says. We have to be faithful unto death. You see, even if death is pressing us, or we laying on our beds, and, and, and the doctor says, "Well, we only got a few hours, and then I'll call in our family." We got to be faithful unto death. Amen. Know that death is just a door that we go through to be be with Him. Because there are too many others. Have left earth other than Elijah. Mm -hmm. All right. He's coming down. Yeah. Right? He came down and got him, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's the other guy? Enoch, Enoch, Enoch. who walked with God. He got so far away from home, he said, Well, you might want well to come on the stage with him. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Up here. He was transitioning. Right. Your faithfulness. It's your faithfulness is going to be more and more on a chat. So much so, he can shake your faithfulness to the local church, right? By this degree. If, if say by chance that, that I fall or, 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 or fall into the trap of the clutches, the clutches of the enemy, I, I get weak in areas while the enemy catches me. And I fall to his his temptation, right? And then the news come out that I don't fail and that something will happen. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? That if you're not faithful, you see, you're not faithful to me. You're not faithful to your local church because God will send someone else, appoint someone else to continue to lead you. You you you're with me? That's they they moan for Moses for. For 30 days. Right. And when God came to Joshua, this is what he said. He said, My servant Moses and David. He, he, what he was saying, it's time for it's time for the morning to be over with. He's dead. He said, As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Amen. Right. So, and so 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 the enemy has a way. Well, he, 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 he searches for ways to shake your faithfulness, your faithfulness to the Lord. You see, you've got to know without a reasonable doubt that whatever happened right to you, you shall be with him. That's what he says. He says, Paul says, he says in chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, this body that we have, this earthly body, that we have going to have decay. It's going to suffer some sickness and all of that kind of stuff in this earthly realm that we live in. We're going to suffer. We're going we're to have colds and flus and different kind of things we're going to suffer. He said, but we got another house not made by human hands. This is what he says, right? But on down in the scripture, he says, I rather and he was talking about being here. He said, I'd rather be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. That's what he says. So he, that's what he's saying. He's saying, he said, no matter what happens to me down here, I'd rather, he said, even though I go through it, I, I, I want to be with him. Regardless of how, I'm going to be with him. That's why, that's why we preach and we say sometimes in front of we say, we, many times they say well, there is no more pain. When we know the person we say there is no more pain. If we know they have accepted Christ Jesus, we say there is no more pain. But the unbeliever who have not accepted Christ as Savior, I think over there in Hebrews what it says, it's appointed man once the what? He ain't come what? The judgment. That's instant. Yeah. That's instant, right? Yeah. 
So, and so uh, again, you got to understand where I'm coming from there, you because know? I'm, I'm talking about faithfulness. So, so when the enemy try to get you, he try to walk away, look for some fault, you know, something happening, they ain't, you know, some fault, so he get you to walk away and not serve the Lord in the moment. Do you know how many, how many, there's a, a great number of, of believers who have been a part of the local church, have gotten hurt, have suffered some type of hurt from a local church. And today, they know they no longer a part of any local church because they that that whatever particular church it was that they was worshiping at done something to hurt them, and they threw all the other churches in the same lump. They no longer worship at the church. And two, they faith if the gift must not be that strong because you go help. Pain, misunderstanding with people, and you know, God said you got to forgive, we love one another, forgive one another. Yeah, I had no sin. Yeah, you know, they ain't gonna stop me from going to talk to the Lord because <laughs> they, like you say, they might not come back. I'm going back because I know what's good for me. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but it's true though what you said. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of people just got good hips there. Yeah, you know, so they faith is weak. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and, and I'm going this way, and I, I'm, I'm traveling. I'm, I may be traveling down a thin line because you need to be aware that your faith's going to be tried, but your faithfulness is also is going to be tried. Right. It's going to be tried by the enemy. The enemy going to come and try you, especially when, especially when you have been elevated. You follow what I'm saying? And, and the local church began to recognize what you do. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and if the pastor or the preacher began to talk more about what you do, others see that. You see what I'm saying? And they be, they be, they're either jealous or get envy of what you do. Or try to stir you away or try to hinder you from doing what you do. Instead of them getting busy, they want to talk about what you do. Yeah, what they need to be doing for the church. Yes. I mean, they said right. Yes. Absolutely. We all, we all grow. It's a growing process. Yes. And we all going to be tried. Yes. Yes. Then, then look, notice, the, notice the end of his prayer when he says, and, and it's more we go in 11 and 12, but he said that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in what? Every good work. Praise the Lord. And, and increase it in knowledge of God. Of God. Amen. It's, yeah, so, yeah, Pastor, when you talk about uh, people leaving the church, you know, I can see people leaving the church if, 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 if the church is doing something outside of the word, outside of God, you know what I'm saying? But I know, I know, should, should nobody be able to run you? Out of your church, if they're preaching and teaching what does say the Lord, I mean, because when we come to church, you know, we're not coming to. I mean, we're coming to fellowship, but our main objective to come to church is to praise and, and worship and love God. Yes, you know, when you get your mind on everything else, you're doing too much. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, now, there, there's a, there's a, a. a, a, a <coughs> I don't like to use the word devil thing. There's occasions where you've been a part of a local church for a number of, a number of years and you might feel as if, well, I'm not going. You know what I'm saying? And, and if the Lord is moving you, you know, to another church, that's perfectly fine. You understand what I'm saying? It's, if the Lord is moving you, but if you looking for fault, because you can definitely find some fault. Amen. Amen. And you use that particular fault to dismiss yourself from, from that local body, you know, and move on. That's a different thing. You, you follow what I'm saying? We all have our assignments. We all have our faults too. We all have our we faults. We need to look at ourselves first. 
Yeah. 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 We have our worst enemy. Yeah. Now there, there are. I'm going. I'm, I think I'm going on record to say there are some established local establishments that are not following the ways of Christ. Right. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? They, 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 uh, it's a dictatorship, legalistic. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's beating. You know, bow beating from pulpit. You, you follow what I'm saying? It's more, it's more of the servant than it is for, 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 for God. Yeah. And if that was going on, then yes, you need to remove yourself from that because we, we, are, we should be Christ-centered. God should be our, our focus. The kingdom of God is what we, is what we share. With. You see what I'm saying? Encourage the, encourage the saints of God to, to walk in, in the newness of God and be worthy of, 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 of before God. You follow what I'm saying? And to also, let me, let me get this one point. And, and to also to reprove and to rebuke, Amen. you see, and to correct those who are member of a local church. You, see, you follow what I'm saying? But you do it in a loving way. You don't do it as a Bruce Yeah, yeah. You, you mean, with me? I mean, uh, uh, what about prosperity? If you guys, you dealing with a church that's always preaching this, <laughs> claiming give, give, give. I mean, I, I mean, some churches, you know, that's all they focus on. And, 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 and like I say, you, you, you're not preaching the old testament. You're not. All you're preaching is God said you can have. You're grown. You, you've grown. You've grown to the point where you know that's not. That should not be the message every Sunday. No. We 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 focus. We focus. I focus primarily focus on giving the first of the month. Right. Because in our in our offering and our giving have dropped tremendously. Mercy. You know what I'm saying. And so with much prayer. All right, the, I ask the Lord to direct me to, to do messages, sermons, to the, to encourage giving. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to. You have to. Yeah. From uh, in the in the uh, environment I'm in now, uh, you know I am when it comes to serving the Lord for talking. The people, some of the people say, well. I listen to the radio, I watch it on TV, and I be saying, well, that's fine, but you're not assembling, you're not fellowshipping, you're not, you're not feed, getting fed constantly, yeah. you know, and that's what some of the people say now, they listen to the radio, that, that's their excuse for not coming to church. I got you, I got you. I mean, and, and I don't understand that, what they're saying. But it's okay to listen to the radio and watch TV, but you still go to church on Sunday. Yeah. But I don't say that because I'm not trying to get in an argument with them. You know, I just say, okay, you know, and I leave it that because I'm only going to talk to you and tell you when I know you want to hear more, yeah. you know. But that's how a lot of people feel yeah. in their society, yeah. the yeah. radio yeah. and television. You, you're going to constantly deal with that. Yeah. And we, I think we have dealt with that in, in, in one of the lesson plans that we had. And, and the more you grow, the more you know. And the more you'll be able to share with those people that you meet who says to you that, well, I can worship at home. Right. You, you follow what I'm saying? Then your response to them say, well, then how do you, how do you, uh, take the word of God that says over in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You see, you got to know exactly where it's at. Right. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes you have to show it to them in your Bible. And most phones have, most phones you can pull up scripture right. in your Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you take what the word of God said, near like not yourself the assembly of the saints, saints right. as some have do? How do you take that when God, God requires us or want us to assemble by you stay at home and worship him. Well, I don't know if scriptures say don't forget to assemble yourself at least once a week. Yes, 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 yes. yes.
That's so. That I get first Corinthians chapter sixteen. I yeah. think the first verse. Mm -hmm. It I says, "On the first of the day of the week, bring your bring, bring your tithes, tithe. bring your offering." Yeah. First fruits. You know <laughs> first fruits. Yeah. Jesus talked more about money than he did anything else. He sure did. He sure did. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. You know, people don't read their Bible and know. Yeah. But as you grow in the Word of God and you get and you familiarize yourself with Scripture. You'll have that scripture in play yeah. because, see, you can't argue with someone who want to debate with you about something, but they can't argue with scripture. You see, that's the word of God. There's no error in the word of God. So, so you show them the word of God. Let them argue with the word of God. You see, and and let that seed be planted in their heads, and let that seed deal with them. That word deal with them. Because if they're truly a believer and this, and they have been saved, the yeah. Holy Spirit who dwells inside of them will deal with them. Yeah. You see? It, it will actually deal with them, make them, you know, come to this reality that I need to assemble myself. Yeah. Because you, you can't do certain things at home which you can do at church. Yeah. See, you can stay in your jammies at home and you can watch a little while, put it on pause, and go get fix your coffee and come back. But you can't feel you can't feel the atmosphere, the spiritual atmosphere that's been created by by the by the choir who's singing. They sing the song. They they created this this worship atmosphere. Yeah. You, you follow what I'm saying? And then having the personal uh, uh, receiving of God's word as He feed the congregation because every church. Have been given a pastor, amen, to, to preach is to feed the congregation. Amen. Because that feeding that they're receiving from the TV might not be for them. Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't it wasn't directed or dropped in the spirit of the preacher to give to that the local congregation. I tell people, you know, uh, you know, most of us got children. Who who got children that uh, let them do what they want to do? Treat them any kind of old way. It's the same with God. You know, God got rules and instructions. Yeah. Like we got children. We don't let our children uh, run us. I mean, the same way with God. We're supposed to respect God and His Word. Yeah. yeah that's, that's so true. We that's are the children. Yeah, we are His children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and, and I, I think that's faithfulness. <laughs> that's, faith, that's faithfulness to God. I'm faithful to Him because what? He. He saved my life. Right. And not only have he saved my life, but he's he's covering me with his blood. Mm -hmm. His yeah. divine protection covers me every day. Because there is there is there is times traveling on the road where mere mists. That's right. And I think the Spirit of God paused my car yes, yes, yes. so that I won't be a victim of a car crash. Yeah. Yeah. It happens every yeah. minute. Yeah. Yeah. They got the yeah. 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 He promised never to leave us, mm -hmm. promised to never ever forsake us. Mm -hmm. And so and so, my faithfulness to him for all that he's done for me. What he's doing. Yeah, what is yeah. even now what he's doing. Do you guys realize, I know you do, Brother Jay, what it goes into uh, formulating, uh, doing the formatting uh, of messages and lesson plans, the research you have to do, scripture, running out the scripture, confirmation scriptures out the scripture to, to bring that into play so that you can be prepared? We, it was just Sunday, so I have, what, two and a half days to, to get prepared for Wednesday night. And I got two days and one more day to send that to Sheila for what I got. Yeah. And this plus deal with your household. Right. Make sure the wifey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so so a lot goes into that. So yeah. is the directing and the and the of the Holy Spirit directing us, moving us? You see? Because there are times when I, I have a thought, and I told Carol, I got a thought. I got to talk, and I write that thing down, and, and I, I got it in my pocket for a minute, and he allows me, he bring that thought back to my memory yeah. when I sit down and begin to do research of it. 
So we have to, you know, in setting God's word, we have to, one of the elements is depending on the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? The knowledge of God, what he means by his word. Yes. Okay. In order for us to express it in our lives and to, to try to get the word across to somebody else mm-hmm. to be expressed in their life. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have to have that spirit of discernment. You got to. You got to spend time with. We got to spend time with. You got to spend time. Like, we may not get it right then, and might make us scratch our head, and might even make us close the book. Yeah. Then, but eventually, it will come to us. It will. It will. It will. It will. It will. It will. The, 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 to be faithful means to be reliable, mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that we, the local church, is missing today. Reliable members. You fall. Reliable, steadfast. Uh, you, you're going to be steadfast regardless of what's going on. You're going to remain steadfast. Right? And unwavering. Right? One, one situation, people, they, they, they don't want to be accountable. They don't want to be held accountable to you. Not to me. Uh, well, no, no, no. When I say you, I'm talking about each other, people. Okay. You know, that, that, that for instance, if, 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 when I'm out, the deacon calls me and yeah. says, hey, we miss you, you, yeah. you know, are you coming? Yeah. People don't want people questioning them about not coming to pray and stuff. Yeah. But it's not that they, they're concerned about you. And they they, they, they like, well, I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. I do what I want to do. That's fine. But I love you. Yeah. I'm just calling in concern yeah. because we miss you. Yeah. You know, is, is, is there something lacking that maybe I can help you with? You know, but everybody want to be their own boss. They don't yeah. want to hear that. Yeah. You you know what what, what, what really what kind of bother me or make me disturbed if if no one called. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ain't, ain't nobody calling. Ain't, ain't nobody reached out and called me or nothing. <laughs> you know, so they don't kind of make me stay away longer. You know, Amen. but Amen. A, a simple phone call, you know, and just to just to share with them that they they are missed. Amen. Whether they was expecting you to call or whether they feel as if you shouldn't call, but that call can really spark something or turn. Amen. You know? Amen. Like I said, I would I would be concerned nobody called. <laughs> you got to be unwavering. Amen. We live in a, we live in a generation now. We got Christians that's unwavering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they lack, they lack steadfastness. They lack being loyal. They, they gonna give you a minute of whatever. Then after, after a while, they don't see whether or not it's benefiting them. They moving on. And so they, they fail in that area because their mind, in their mind, their mind have not been transformed. You know, by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. And if your mind hasn't been renewed, you're still going to have worldly thoughts. You're going to have you know, worldly desires. And you're going to be caught up in what the world does. Mm-hmm. More so than what you're thinking about what heaven is wanting you to do. Look, look what he says over in, in Romans chapter 12. And, two. and this is a familiar scripture. This is one scripture, Brother Woods, you, you, should be, you should know. You should be familiar with. Yeah. Right? He said, be not conformed. This was Paul. Said, be not conformed to this world. Don't allow the world to compress you into their ideals or to their system. Amen. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. So, so your mind have to you, your mind have to be regenerated, renewed to think differently. Amen. Amen. So, because we come into the, when we come into this this faith. This, this this gospel faith and our belief in Jesus Christ. We come in with the, we be born into the world and so the world system has already been in, already been seared in, in our minds. So it has to be changed, transformed. Unless it be transformed, you can't prove what is that good. Amen. Amen. Right? It, you, it, it lets it be renewed and transformed. You can't prove what is good. 
You got it, Carol? You keep proving. Yes. Chapter 12, verse 2, Romans. Not only that, but you but also acceptable and perfect will of God. You, you don't know what, what he has for you. What will did he have for you? We, we know we know the will of God is that none should perish and all should come unto repentance. We know that the general sovereignty of God, the sovereign will of God. But what about the will he have for you? You don't know what the perfect will of God because your mind has not been transformed or been renewed. You still got this worldly thoughts Amen. in your head. Amen. And, and, and that's where I think that's where uh, uh, perhaps I, I've done a poor job in that on, on, on new Christians. As far as just pouring into them it's the, on, on a constant basis. But if we can ever get them to be consistent in their coming, you see, maybe we can we can do more of the trend. We use the Bible to more transform them and to renewing their thinking, to to being more faithful, right, to the local church and as well to God, or to God first and to the local church. Paul Paul understood how important it was to be faithful. He suffered a whole lot of stuff, man. Just, just what Jesus, just what Jesus told him on the master's road. When, when, he, when he was knocked off his beast and he was sent down to the street called Straight, and, and he and he and he sent Ananias, Ananias sent Ananias to him to, to, to lay hands on him and to baptize him. He told Ananias, he must know how much he's going to suffer for the cause of Christ. His, when he was called into the mission, right, to be apostle to the Gentiles, he said, he's going to know how much to suffer for the cause of Christ. And that, that wasn't because he caused other Christians to suffer. That, that's because he knows that in order to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, that's going to be some suffering. That's going to that's be some challenges in what people believe. And when you challenge what people believe, you got trouble. But so they don't want to give up what they believe. Amen. Amen. You follow what I'm saying? When you, and, and Paul has to suffer. And, and over in Acts 14 and 19, he said, They came thither, certain Jews of Antioch and I can't, Iconium, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, Drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. They, they stoned the boy. Left him out there for being dead. Some say that might have been a brother Kevin. That might have been the thing where he went to hell. With the third hell. Right? You say he don't know. He say he might have been in the dream. We don't know. That might have been the time where he went to third hell. And he, was, he, he heard something that wasn't good for him to repeat. Then over in Acts chapter 16, you guys know for me with this scripture, verse 22 down 24, and the multitude rose up together against them, they talking about Paul and Silas, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten. That's Paul and Silas. Because a damsel was walking around who had a demonic spirit in him. He called that spirit out of him. And because the damsel no longer was able to collect money or make money for them, they took, put Paul and made Paul and Silas get beat. And when they had laid many strikes, many strikes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safe. Who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stock. They there was a they, down to the inner prison. They wasn't up on the top level. They were down at the bottom level of the dungeon <laughs> with the chain on the legs. That's when that angel came and got them out of there. No, that's at midnight. Oh, that's that midnight sermon. Yeah. At midnight, they started saying yeah. praise. Yeah. 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 And pray. And God started thumping his feet up in heaven. Yeah. Called yeah. the earthquake. Now, if you read that scripture, Brother McCall, you'll see. You focus. He called earthquake to have a Right there where the jail was. 
All, all other places didn't suffer the earthquake, but that one place yeah. caused the stocks or the or the shackles off their legs to come off. And the jail cell came wide open. Now they were singing loud enough for those prisoners to hear. Right? In the jail with James said, What must I do to get saved? Absolutely. He shined a light in there. He shined a light in there with Peter and Silas. He said, We here. We ain't gone nowhere. Because he realized that if they had escaped, the jail would have lost his life. Yeah. Yeah. Then the devil, the jail, said, well, What must we do to be saved? <laughs> his whole house was saved. So Peter, Paul suffered. He suffered for his faithfulness. We we also going to be talked about. Right? They they going to say you roller totally rollers, goody two shoes, and all of that. Right? They'll probably uh, talk about Kevin and the, the Smith family. I've heard it. The Smith family they in control of everything. Why are you still there? Well, if the Smith family were here, where would the church be? Amen. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Because ain't nobody else volunteering to do the, the cleaning and the work, Amen. open the doors and stuff, Amen. make sure and everything. But they have their way of trying to try to move you away from following the ways of Christ from a local facility as Washington Hills Baptist Church. Who making decisions? Trust ain't making decisions. Everybody playing their part. Everybody playing their part. But what they don't they see that one saying, they they they're not a part of it, but they want to question yes. and talk yes. about everything else. Right. You see. And they the enemy will do that in a heartbeat. You know, Paul was persecuted for his faithfulness. And we should understand. Here's he, he, what he said. He left on record. He left on record. If you allow the enemy to come in and, 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 and persuade you, then you'll start following after your flesh rather than start following after spirit. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. Look what he said. He wrote to Galatian church. Galatian church, he says, who had persuaded you? Who, 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 who had persuaded you? All this time, all the preaching that we have taught you, right now you want to turn back. Who bewitched you? Yeah, who bewitched you? That's right. Who bewitched you? Now you want to turn back. You want to turn back, go down on Ninth Street. Who, who, who swayed you? He says. He said, "Then I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh." Amen. If you engage in the Spirit, if you allow the Spirit of God to lead you and guide you. You, you won't walk in the flesh. Amen. Amen. I tell you, uh, walking in the spirit and not in the flesh, that flesh, it'll, it'll, it pops up, but when you walk in the spirit, you know what God said, you know what God word is. He's yeah. talking to you. Yeah. Don't, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, <laughs> Brother McCauley, let me just be truthful with you. A person who is addicted, you understand what I'm saying? The flesh the flesh using using the drugs or the alcohol, right, to get them in bondage. That more so lead them more so than the spirit. Amen. That's what he said. He said if you if you walk in the spirit, you you won't be you won't walking in the flesh. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The the flesh, excuse me, the flesh try to. Persuade you or try to make you do some things that you wouldn't know, normally do. Mm -hmm. You say, for the flesh lusts against the what? Spirit. spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. Yes. And these are contrary one to another. Mm -hmm. Didn't we have that on our son's yeah. 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 Right? You guys should be familiar with that because you're all on Sunday school. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, what they doing? Warring. Warring against one another. Right? One in a negative way and the other in a positive way. Right? The one in a negative way trying to get you to do something that's against the, against God. The spirit is trying to keep you from doing from fulfilling the lust of the flesh. 
and they just warn. It's just like a person's head going like this. Or, or we use that simple thing. We got one on this shoulder and one on the other shoulder. Talking to you. Paul right about that. He said, I, when I try to do right, I end up doing wrong. Yeah. 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 And that's the way it is. Yeah. yeah. You know, you try to do good. Evil always present. Always around. Always. Yeah. You recognize? You gotta keep praying. Gotta keep. You gotta keep praying. He said, no longer me. They're doing it. Yeah. Evil honest. Yeah. One thing about that, brother, brother James, is this. They wasn't ready for Paul to actually make that confession. No. Mm -hmm. When he wrote it in the Roman chapter 7, they weren't prepared for him to say uh -huh. that because he was very open with him. Mm -hmm. He said, the things I do, the things I want to do, I do not. And the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am. Right? So that's the war that's going on in, inside of us. He said, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, they, they contrary to one another. Um, you you got to be, you got to thank God that you got the Holy Spirit down inside of you. Praise the Lord. Pastor, I have found, uh, I have like gone to bed Thinking of thinking things that I I never been thinking of <laughs> I shouldn't be doing, and then I will get up in the morning and uh, open my app to do my my morning reading, Devotional. and it's it's right there. Yeah, something to uh, yeah. you know to, to put me right back on the right track. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. And that and it happens to me that way a lot. You know. Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you. Believers don't understand the, the war that's going on. Yeah, it, the, the war is, 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 is the, the war is for your soul. How precious your soul. You think what a man would give for the for the for his soul? A lot of them sold it, have sold their soul out. For fame and fortune. Right? And, and not only that, because it, it's so important, that's so important in our relationship with God. When we when we we continue to increase our relationship with the Lord and, and, and continue to, to, to allow the knowledge of God to increase what we know about Him, right? We, we can see the love of God overshadowing us, then, then we won't be driven by the lust of the flesh. But if we if we continue to bite talk about <coughs> one another, right? All we're doing is just growing, Amen. doing the enemy's work. Mercy, right? Mercy, right? We, we, we talk about the devil, but it's the devil, so they ain't doing nothing. <laughs> they doing it themselves. And you know, uh, and I don't want to get off the subject, but they done did the black people like that. Yeah. You know, they got the black people killing each other. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Then, you know, white yeah. folks used to hang them. And they, yeah. Now they got black people. It's all don't say it. It's all don't say When you say they, when you say they got, who are you talking about? The man. The white man. The white race. Man. 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 You know they used to hang. No, no, you no. ain't heard about all that hanging used to go? No, no. What he, can, I, can I come in on that? Them. Let me come in on that. What he's saying is, they have been so evil for so long and mistreated other races. We are starting to act like them. <laughs> We're not acting like God loves us. God, this is God. Where we acting like it. You got black people today don't want to be around black people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was at one time, you know, black people all lived in one area. Mm -hmm. the black people raised their children, and, and daddy still home with their children and, and raised them like they're supposed to be raised. And after the God, it won't be that problem. But they raising their children like white folks raised them. Uh -huh. That's what I'm trying to tell you. We'll get out of way. Let's get back on foot. Let's get back on foot. Throw that out there. You say that the next time you preach. <laughs> you can't, they won't interrupt you. Either. They won't interrupt you. Say that when you preach. <laughs> right. Let's, let, let's go to Matthew chapter 5. 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 Matthew chapter Look at the verse 2. Give me verse 2. Look what he said. Moreover, it is required as steward that a man, and he's using the masculine tense. It just ain't for a man. It's for everybody. Mankind. Be found what? 
faithful. Be found faithful. That's what he's going to say when you get there. What are you going to say? What are you going to say, Brother James? Have you been faithful like I've been? No, the one you always say at the close. Oh. What do you want them to hear? Oh, oh yeah. My, faithful faithful servant. Servant. <laughs> well my, well my good and faithful servant. You must have a senior moment right now. <laughs> well done. The good and what? Faithful servant. Right. So you've been faithful over what? A few things. So he didn't put a whole lot on you, just a few things. This is what Sister Diane Dominic said a few things. So you look at the few things that he don't gave you to hold on to to be faithful or to be a good steward over it. Right. So when you get there, he say, come on up. Okay. Enter well, to the journey. Amen. One of our biggest problems is we want them now. Yeah, we want them now. We well, don't want it now. You know, yep. God, like he did the children of Israel, he told them, y'all just get so much that day for what you need. Amen. Yeah. Don't overdo it. He said, and then prior, he said, I'm going to give you what you need every day. Yeah. Every day. And we got to get that in our mind that he's going to take care of. Every day. You're a child of God. Yeah. Amen. Every day. I mean, who would want to be rich? But I don't need no million dollars. I wouldn't I, know what, I, if I, I had, I wouldn't know what to do with it. I do. <laughs> I spend it. <laughs> I do. I certainly do. That's all I, I do. do. I certainly do. As long as he meet my needs every day, that's a blessing. Yeah, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied with that. Listen, yeah. if you endure to the end, if you, if you endure the, the trials and the temptations, get up, Marcus. You endure the trials and the temptations, get up. If you endure the trials and the temptations that's going to come up against us, even the trying of our faith. Amen. Right? We said last week, you shall receive a crown of life. Amen. 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 That's something to look forward to. What That's say. great honor. I, I said last last Wednesday, you might see my little crown cocked over to the side. <laughs> yeah. If I do it now, now listen. There is a there is a place in the, in, in Revelation where where the, the one who's sitting on the throne mm -hmm. is sitting on the throne, right? And the twenty four elders, the one who have their crown, they took their crown off and threw it at the Savior's feet. Because it don't mean nothing when you get standing before him. That crown don't mean nothing Amen. when you're standing in the presence Amen. of the Lord. Right. When you're standing in the presence of him, he's the king of kings king. and Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. This coming Sunday, we will have communion services Sunday. Right? Sunday school starts at 9.30. You can view our Sunday school at 8 o'clock on our YouTube channel or watch the First Baptist Church of Washington Hill. You can catch up. You can get a, a get ahead of us, amen, and get some nuggets before you come to Sunday school at 9.30 in person Sunday school. Then at 10.30, sharply at 10.30, we go into our morning worship. Amen. Join us Sunday right here at 5611 Upshot Drive. This Saturday, no, it's next Saturday, on the 11th, amen. on the 11th, Women Ministry is going to HC, NAC. Sister Baker, visit Sister Baker. So let's get with Sister Holmes and let her know whether or not you're going to be there or not. All right? Yeah. All right. Pray for the Smith family. The homeboy service will be Saturday at noon. At noon. At Taylor's funeral. Amen. Just call them and, and tell them your, their prayers are with you. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. We thank you for the lessons you have provided for us tonight. Help us to be strong and to, to remain faithful to you, Lord God, until death, Lord God. We thank you for all the many blessings we have received from you. Amen. We pray that, that you continue to keep the Smith family in your keeping care. Yes, Lord God, not only the Smith family, but others who are, <clears throat> whose head are bowed down in the ring. Yes, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.